If one day you woke up miles underground and alone, what would your realistic reaction be? Hello everybody. I'm Lavis, and the SCP I'm going to tell you about today is SCP-3515, Unearth. Let's begin. Item number SCP-3515. Object Class, Safe. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-3515 is to be stored in a standard art locker at Site-77. Containment and testing locations must be situated no less than 50 meters from any on-site sleeping quarters and common areas. Description. SCP-3515 is a 40cm by 60cm charcoal drawing on paper, currently fitted in a wooden frame. The drawing depicts a barren landscape with a large knotted willow tree in the foreground, at the crest of a hill of bare earth. The artist and date of creation are unknown. Persons spending more than one hour in close proximity to SCP-3515, within a range of approximately 5 meters, will be subject to low-volume auditory hallucinations described as the sound of slow, steady digging. In noise comparison tests, subjects have most commonly matched SCP-3515-induced hallucinations with recordings of manual digging with a metal shovel in heavy clay soil. If an affected individual is no longer in proximity to SCP-3515, these auditory hallucinations cease. If an individual enters slow-wave sleep, stage 3 of non-REM sleep, while in proximity to SCP-3515, that individual will spontaneously dematerialize. Dematerialization will include clothing and other objects physically attached to the individual. No further evidence is available of the location of civilians presumed to have been affected by this phenomenon. In Foundation experimentation, the most notable test to date has been Experimental Protocol 3515-C01. Experimental Protocol 3515-C01 Selected Logs Notes a single test subject, D-6042, was placed in the testing chamber with SCP-3515 and a standard Foundation single bedding set. D-6042 was fitted with a GPS tracking device, a head-mounted camera and microphone, and a transmitter affixed to D-6042's clothing. The following are relevant extracts from the recording logs. The initial phase of the experiment confirmed the presence of auditory hallucinations as anticipated and showed no unexpected results. After initial observations were complete, the secondary effect of SCP-3515 was tested. Elapsed time, 1 hour, 46 minutes, and 7 seconds. So you want me to lie down and go to sleep? That's correct. Please do not remove or disable your equipment. Okay. Uh, what are you testing for, please? I'm sorry, I can't tell you that. We will be monitoring you at all times. Right, sure. Is, is there anything you can do about that noise? I'm afraid not. Just try to ignore it. I'll try to. It's pretty quiet anyway. D-6042 lies in a lateral position with the camera facing the wall of the testing chamber. No sound is recorded other than D-6042's breathing. After approximately 17 minutes, the attached electroencephalograph records D-6042 falling asleep. Approximately 20 minutes later, brainwave patterns indicate that D-6042 has reached slow-wave sleep. D-6042 dematerializes. Clothing and attached electronic devices also dematerialize, with the exception of the leads for the electroencephalograph, which remains on the bed. Signals from the camera, microphone, and GPS continue to be received by the monitoring team. The GPS signal updates to a location and redacted. This location is confirmed by multilateration of the broadcast signal of the recording equipment. The view from the head-mounted camera changes to what appears to be another room. The wall is of a different color, and the shape of the pillow also appears different. Breathing can be heard through the microphone, suggesting that D-6042 remains asleep. The monitoring team continues to observe while the closest mobile task force is ordered to the location of the GPS signal. The MTF reports a suburban house, showing signs of recent habitation but with the current residents absent. Footage from one of the upstairs bedrooms resembles the interior shown on D-6042's camera. D-6042 is not present in the bedroom. After approximately three hours with no activity observed, the monitoring team agrees to attempt to wake D-6042 up. D-6042, D-6042, can you hear me? D-6042! What? Uh, yes, yes, I can hear you. Sorry, I was asleep. The camera turns to show the ceiling of the darkened room. 
That's okay. How do you feel? I'm fine. A bit groggy, but I'm fine. Why? Can you describe your surroundings, please? The camera view turns, showing the interior of a typical bedroom including a bookcase and desk. The room's dimensions and paint color are consistent with those observed by the mobile task force, but the furnishings are different. Members of the MTF are not visible. What the... what is this? D-6042, do you recognize your location? Uh, yeah. This is my bedroom. Uh, in my parents' house, I mean. This is my bedroom from when I was a kid. Wow, these are my books. We have an agent in the room with you. They can't see you there. There's no one here with me. How did I get here? We're hoping you can help us work that out. You are the first person to document this phenomenon. Could you please have a look around and see if there's anything unusual? Uh, I, I guess. D-6042 exits the bedroom and walks along a hallway. No other persons are observed. Hello? Anyone there? No response is heard. D-6042 reaches a landing and proceeds down a flight of stairs. There are framed photographs on the wall of the staircase. Wow, even the same pictures. The photographs appear normal and are consistent with known information about D-6042's family. Background checks confirm the GPS location as D-6042's childhood residence. Are any of you guys here? Mom? The MTF reports the return of the current owners of the property, who are unrelated to D-6042. They are temporarily detained by the Foundation and later amnesticized. D-6042 reaches the base of the stairs and enters a living area. Electric lights are operational, but curtains are drawn. This is so weird. It's just like it was when I was growing up. I fell off that sofa when I was seven, burned my wrist. So everything is as you remember. Yeah, although a lot quieter with no one here. But otherwise... Oh, wait a second. What is it? That painting on the far wall. I don't remember that. D-6042 crosses the living area. The picture on the wall resembles SCP-3515. That's the painting from the test. I'm sure we didn't have this at home. You haven't seen that picture before the test? Do you recall having a different painting on this wall when you were a child? No, I don't remember. But I haven't seen this picture before today, I'm sure. Could you please go a little nearer so we could see it close up? D-6042 approaches SCP-3515. The details of the picture appear unchanged. Looks the same to me. Thank you. Same for us. Although, I can't say for sure, but maybe the noise is a little bit louder? The digging sound? Yeah. Okay, we'll make a note of that. Keep an eye out for any other differences. In the meantime, could you please open the curtains? We'd like to take a look outside. D-6042 pulls open the curtains. The exterior of the window is obscured. Weird. It's like it's covered in mud. Or like... D-6042 runs to the front door of the house, unlocks it, and attempts to pull it open. The door appears to be stuck in place. D-6042 pulls on the handle, leaning away from the door. Suddenly, the door opens, the camera hitting the ground as D-6042 falls. D-6042 scrambles away from the door. The camera struggles to focus. Ow. No, no. D-6042, talk to us. Are you injured? What's going on? You can't see it? D-6042 walks back towards the front door. The space behind the open door is filled with dark soil. Dirt has spilled onto the floor of the house and onto D-6042's jumpsuit. What the heck? D-6042 reaches through the doorway, pulling at the dirt. Clumps of earth fall to the ground, and more dirt falls into the gap from above. There is no obvious limit to the volume of soil outside the door. D-6042 moves rapidly through the kitchen and other rooms, pulling aside curtains and opening windows where possible. The entire house appears to be surrounded by packed earth. What the heck? What the heck? Please try to remain calm, D- Screw that! D-6042 runs upstairs and into the house's bedrooms, continuing to curse and ignoring instructions from the monitoring team. All upstairs windows are also blocked with earth. D-6042 appears increasingly agitated. D-6042 returns downstairs to the living area, picks up a wooden chair, and throws it at the window. 
the window breaks. Dark earth spills through the crack. D6042 falls into a sitting position, breathing heavily. You scum! You absolute scum! You buried me! Shortly afterward, D6042 removed the camera and headset. The GPS tracking signal moved within the area of the house for several hours. Eventually, D6042 returned to the living area and reattached the camera and headset, resuming contact with the monitoring team. Elapsed time, 8 hours, 49 minutes, and 6 seconds. Thank you for coming back. Shut up. You have to get me out of here. I've looked everywhere I can, and it's the same. This whole place is covered in dirt. Doors, windows, I even checked the basement. And behind it, there's just more dirt. You have to get me out, okay? I can assure you that we're trying every approach we possibly can to- No, you have to get me out. Not try, do it. <sighs> Look, okay? I'm sorry. I'm trying to stay calm, but I'm not alright here. I need your help. We're going to help you. We will. Please. We will. Now, have you eaten? <laughs> yeah, a little. There's stuff in the kitchen. Something to drink? We thought we could hear the taps running. Yeah. Slept? No. It's probably a good idea if- How long do I have? I'm sorry? Until I run out of air. How long until there's no more oxygen? Well, it's more the carbon dioxide that you need to- How long? Uh, actually it should be quite a long time. The house is pretty large, so provided we keep the air ventilating, you should have enough for weeks maybe? Oh, is that true? I mean, yeah, it should be. So you'll get me out? Yes, we will. But first, I think we should all get some sleep, and we'll come up with a new plan tomorrow. I don't know. We've got plenty of time. You have lots of food and water, and... And there's nothing there to interfere with you. Ideally, I'd like to try with you sleeping in the living room. No! No, I don't want to sleep here. Is it the picture? I know how you feel, but it's possible that falling asleep with it again will reverse the effect. Okay. I'll try. D-6042 slept for several hours in the living room. No change in situation was evident. The next day, the experimental team guided D-6042 through the house, confirming that all areas outside of the building were filled with soil of various types and consistencies. Samples were collected for testing. Attempts to use communication devices were unsuccessful. While all equipment was operational, telephone calls were not connected, other than to answering machines. The desktop computer was not able to be connected to the internet. The television could be viewed, but only pre-recorded programs were broadcast with no live content. Following these tests, it was determined that D-6042 would attempt to tunnel upwards from the house using a garden shovel from the basement. D-6042 spent the remainder of the day collecting supplies from within the house, including food and battery-powered lighting. The monitoring team provided instruction on setting up a makeshift ventilation system to provide air circulation. On the next morning, D-6042 returned to a window in the attic to commence digging. Elapsed time, 41 hours, 12 minutes, 54 seconds. Okay, switch the fans on as you go past. Good. Then start the hole at the top, just below the top of the window. <coughs> Great. May as well just throw it back down the stairs. And then just keep going like that. We'll be here if you want to talk. <sighs> Jeez, this is gonna take forever. Do I have to start from the top? I know the angle is awkward, but it'll get easier once you've started the tunnel. Doing it this way means you can keep that arc shape at the top, which will be more stable. And it'll help make sure you're always heading upwards. Although we can just use the spirit level for that once you've gotten going. Okay, James. You know best. D-6042 made slow but steady progress on the tunnel during the day. D-6042's attitude during this period fluctuated between anger, withdrawal, and a strong desire for conversation. When preparing to sleep that night, D-6042 watched television for several hours. Digging resumed on the second day. Elapsed time, 69 hours, 44 minutes, and 18 seconds. D-6042 is at the end of the tunnel, shoveling heavy clay into a toboggan used to transport it back to the attic. On the next strike, the shovel blade makes a sharp noise. I hit something! James! I'm here. What is it? I hit something. There's something hard here. D-6042 leans forward and pulls at the tunnel face with both hands. 
Lumps of clay fall, revealing a white shape. Can you see this, James? Yes, we see it. Further digging reveals the shape as a long bone. D6042 pulls away. Wait, wait, that's a bone! That's okay. You'd expect bones underground, wouldn't you? No, 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 that's not right. It's not right, James. Do you know why? I've been digging and digging, but there's nothing here. No worms, no bugs, nothing that lives underground. No moles, nothing. So if they aren't here, why is there a bone? Let's take a closer look at it, okay? See what we can learn about it. <sighs> right. All right. D6042 pulls away dirt from around the bone, moving down its length. A large chunk of clay comes loose at the base, revealing the bones of a human foot. Oh god, I told you! D6042 scrambles back out of the tunnel and into the house. The monitoring team's attempts to discuss the situation are ignored, and the headset is abandoned for some time. After approximately two hours, D6042 is observed walking past the headset and into the tunnel, carrying the shovel. 45 minutes later, D6042 returns to the attic and reattaches the headset. I told you, are you there? Yes, we're here. What did you tell us? I'll show you. This place is... I'll show you. D6042 returns to the tunnel. Halfway along its length, the side of the tunnel shows signs of recent digging, forming a shallow branch at an angle to the main tunnel. Two bones protrude from the earth at knee height. They appear similar to human radius and ulna. See? Did you see that? D6042 uses the shovel to move the loose dirt on the tunnel floor. A series of smaller bones are observed, presumed to be human carpal, metacarpal, and phalanges. Tell me what the heck is going on. I can't. I'm sorry, I don't know what this is. We're doing our best. Your best? D6042 swings the shovel hard into the tunnel face at shoulder height, digging erratically. A sharp scraping sound is heard. D6042 swings again, and a large clump of earth falls. As it hits the tunnel floor, it breaks open, revealing a second human hand, partially decomposed. There is a sound of dry retching, and D6042 retreats from the tunnel. Labored breathing is heard for several minutes. D6042? Buddy, are you okay? Please. You need to do more. I can't. We're doing it. We can see our GPS signal. When you're in the tunnel, at the other end, it's coming from the garden. We have a team coming. They're going to start digging down towards you. We'll get you out. Please. You have to. We will. But we need you to keep digging up towards us. We'll see on the camera what you're seeing, and we can just use that to see how close we are to finding you. No, not more. Not today. Okay, that's okay. We'll start again tomorrow. D6042 spent the rest of the day eating and sitting near the television. Early on the following morning, as D6042 was climbing to the tunnel entrance, the lights in the house lost power. Elapsed time, 88 hours, 20 minutes, and 42 seconds. Jesus! Can you still hear me? I'm still here. What's going on? What happened? We don't know yet, but we can go down to the living room and- No. No, I'm not going down there. I'm getting out. Okay, I hear you. See if you can find the lamp at least. D6042 climbs up and enters the tunnel, digging rapidly. D6042 speaks rarely, working in short bursts and resting on the tunnel floor. On several occasions, the tunneling disturbs bones or decomposing human remains. These are either covered in loose dirt by D6042 or ignored entirely. The monitoring team estimates that the total remains uncovered to date comprise at least 12 individuals. After several hours, the shovel blade strikes something hard at the tunnel base. <laughs> Piece of... D6042, we really need to see what this is. Please. Why? Huh? Why? It might be something we can use to help get you out. Right. D6042 digs deeper into the tunnel floor, exposing a decomposing human torso with several exposed ribs. Further along is a head, with some flesh and hair remaining. That's good. Could you go a little closer, please? God, it smells. How will this help? Perhaps we can work out how they were buried. It could tell us how close you are to the surface. Can you pick up the head, please? I don't want to touch it. Come on, it won't hurt you. I really need you to do this. You need me to do this? You need me? Screw you, James! Screw you! I need to get out! Me! Out! 
D6042 hits the corpse repeatedly with the flat of the shovel, smashing the bones. Is that okay? Is that helpful? Screw you! D6042 resumes digging erratically, no longer stopping to transport loose dirt from the tunnel. The incline of D6042's tunneling has increased. When an arm is exposed and hangs from the tunnel ceiling, D6042 hacks at it with the shovel until it falls and leaves it behind to be covered in earth as digging continues. After several hours, the shovel again strikes something hard near the tunnel roof. D6042 digs further, exposing what appears to be a long tree root. D6042 ceases digging and remains looking up at the root. Hey, that's a good sign. D6042 does not respond. It should mean that you're getting closer to the surface. If you get a bit closer, we can try to work out how near. No, it's not. I don't like it. It's not right. What's wrong? It looks normal. No. No. Dr. Hallard makes contact with the digging team. The team has reached a depth of 20 meters. The excavation appears normal with no signs of human remains. There are no large trees in the vicinity of D6042's childhood house. D6042 continues digging at the face of the tunnel for several more hours without food or water. Several further tree roots are exposed in the tunnel ceiling, as well as a disembodied leg wrapped in scraps of material. D6042 continues, avoiding contact with the tree roots. After 14 hours of activity, monitoring staff attempt to intervene. Hey, I know you're ignoring us, but you need to stop. You need rest and food. You need to sleep. I need to get out. Yes, but you can't dig if you're exhausted. You'll do better if you rest. I don't want to. Just a break then. We can talk. Okay. D6042 sits on the tunnel floor. Doesn't it feel better to take a break? I am pretty tired. Fair enough. You've made good progress today, despite it all. Yeah. Tell me. What would you like as your first meal when you get back? I don't know. Well, what sort of food do you like? Pizza? A burger? Burger. With cheese. Nice. Could I get McDonald's, do you think? A quarter pounder? I'm sure we can arrange that. Just tell us what you'd like. I'm getting hungry. D6042 returns to the tunnel entrance to collect food and water and eats. Tomorrow you'll be ready to go again. Uh-huh. Shall we head back down tonight? Back to your bed? No. It's probably better if you can, from an air circulation perspective. No, I'm not going back down there. Alright? Well, stay out here near the entrance at least. D6042 switches off the battery-powered lamp. The tunnel and the attic are dark and silent. How long has it been, James? Four days. Oh. I'm sorry about yelling. That's okay. Don't think about that. Think about what you'll do when you're back. Hmm. James... I've been thinking about the tree. Which tree? The one in the picture. I've been thinking about it a lot. I didn't tell you. I'm sorry. That's okay. All the time, while I'm digging, I think about the picture, and the noise, and the tree. I think the tree hates me. It hates me. It's alright. You're alright. Don't worry, we're here. I'm sorry. Maybe it's our team you can hear, digging from above. That could be a good sign. Maybe. D6042 falls asleep for a few hours before waking with a start. What? Who's there? I'm here, Dr. Hallard. Oh, hi James. It's still early. You could go back to sleep. No, I'm getting out. D6042 turns on the lantern, takes the shovel, and resumes digging. Human remains are uncovered frequently. Elapsed time, 109 hours, 12 minutes, and 16 seconds. God, it smells. Why are there so many bodies? I don't know. Perhaps you're below a graveyard? That would be a good sign. The surface would be close. <laughs> a good sign below a graveyard? Come on, buddy. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Come on, bodies. Let's all dig together. Dig, dig, dig. Oh, look, a boot. Anyone need a boot? Looks like a good one. I'm sure I can get the foot out. Hey James, you need a boot? D6042 continues to dig, depositing body parts on the tunnel floor as they are dug up. Another arm! How many is that so far? How many more to come? How many? There is a sudden, heavy noise, and the lantern is extinguished, leaving only D6042's headlamp. No! 
What's going on? Talk to me. It fell. It fell, James. The headlamp moves rapidly, but reveals that the tunnel behind D-6042 has collapsed and filled with earth. The lantern has been buried, and the tunnel blocked. No, 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 no! Stay calm! You can do this, you just have to dig your way back through the collapsed section, so you can get through to- No, I can't go back! You have to, buddy. You need to dig back to the house, there's not enough air where you are. Help me. I'm trying, but you have to do this, okay? D-6042 begins to shovel loose earth from the top of the collapsed section. More earth falls from above, together with a human leg in the early stages of decomposition. The leg is clothed in gray rags. Oh god. D-6042 continues digging at the collapsed section, forming a low hole. This hole appears stable, but dirt continues to fall from the ceiling of the remaining tunnel. Hurry! There is another loud noise from behind D-6042. The camera turns. More of the tunnel roof has collapsed, reducing the remaining tunnel to a few meters in length. Come on, keep digging! The camera turns abruptly upwards, and D-6042 gasps. Where the tunnel roof has fallen in, a series of thin tree roots have been exposed. Above, there is no dirt. The tree roots extend upwards into the empty blackness as far as the headlamp's light can reach. D-6042 drops the shovel. <laughs> Wait, we need to- D-6042 scrambles into the low hole dug in the first collapsed section and crawls forward, pulling dirt away manually. Attempts by the monitoring team to communicate are ignored. D-6042 continues digging forward slowly, surrounded by earth. D-6042's camera view shows dirt on all sides, and the microphone records rapid breathing. Try to stay calm. Slower breaths, okay? D-6042 continues digging forwards, ignoring communications from the monitoring team. The hole remains narrow and low. D-6042's hands appear to be bleeding in several places. After approximately 30 minutes, D-6042 jerks to a stop. My foot! Somebody's got my foot! D-6042 attempts to look back, but the hole is too cramped to turn. Help! It's got me! Are you sure? It could just be the dirt, or more tree roots? D-6042 squirms, twisting to face upwards. I can't see, it's got my foot! The camera moves wildly, but nothing can be seen on D-6042's foot. D-6042 appears to be hyperventilating. I have to get out! D-6042 begins clawing at the roof of the hole, attempting to dig directly upwards. Dirt falls directly onto the camera. Hey, you can't- <sighs> Please listen to me, you have to go forward. The air, it won't- D-6042 makes no response, continuing to dig upwards. The digging exposes gray fabric in the soil above. As more earth falls, it reveals a human torso covered in a gray jumpsuit. No! What is it? It's me! That's my clothes! That was my boot before. They're all me. That doesn't make any sense. D-6042 scratches at the clothing on the roof of the tunnel. As the torso is exposed, a partially obscured number is visible on the chest of the jumpsuit. D-6042 continues to claw frantically at the sides and the roof of the hole, exposing the head of the corpse. The corpse's face appears to resemble that of D-6042. D-6042 screams and attempts to roll over, away from the dead face. As D-6042 moves, there is a loud noise and the corpse falls from behind, together with a large volume of earth. D-6042 is knocked down. When the camera refocuses, the head of the corpse is directly in front of the lens, with packed soil visible above. The corpse appears to have fallen on top of D-6042, collapsing the tunnel and burying D-6042. The camera does not move. Can you hear me? Can you move? It's okay, buddy. I'm sorry, it's okay. After approximately 30 minutes, D-6042 makes noises consistent with suffering convulsions due to hypercapnia. After a further 8 minutes, no further sounds are audible from D-6042. The digging team continues excavation for a further 2 hours, reaching a depth of approximately 50 meters. No unusual results are observed. The team ceases work. D-6042's camera and light continue operation for another 123 hours before running out of battery. 
Analysis of the final five hours of film has identified sounds consistent with muffled digging, slowly growing louder. Thank you very much for listening. If you like what you heard and want to hear more, you could click over here for another video I made, or you could click over here to subscribe. And if you have any other SCP ideas that you want to hear me read, please leave them in the comments below. Have a nice day.